Earth has a surface area of almost 197 million square miles, and more than two-thirds of it is covered by water. To this day, a great majority of our oceans and seas remain vastly unexplored. We know more about the secrets and enigmas of the lunar surface than we do about the world's waters. For as long as there have been eyewitness reports of UFOs in our skies, there have been similar reports of so-called USOs, or unidentified submerged objects, in our oceans. A USO is a UFO that goes into or out of water. In fact, UFOs and USOs are probably the same things. A UFO becomes a USO when it's no longer flying and submerges. For the first time ever, explore the mysteries of this most elusive class of UFO. Be nice if the Navy would tell us about all their observations of such craft. It is definitely possible to have an underwater vehicle at supersonic speed. From reports that the lost city of Atlantis is a secret base for USOs. The legend of Atlantis is based on knowledge that such a base exists today. To an eyewitness account recorded in Christopher Columbus's journal in 1492. They saw it going up and down in the night the world's only government documented USO incident, a dramatic event off the coast of Nova Scotia, Canada. On the night of October 4, 67, a UFO was seen to hover over the waters of Chang Harbor, tilted to a 45 degree angle, and descended rapidly to the water surface, producing a flash and the sound of an explosion. According to researchers, deep sea UFOs continue to lurk through the uncharted waters of Earth. Have UFOs visited our planet, or are they already here? This is the Santa Catalina Channel, a 26-mile-wide stretch of the Pacific Ocean separating the city of Los Angeles from Catalina Island. According to experts, these waters, portions of which might be as deep as Mount Everest is high, may contain some of the world's darkest mysteries. You are seeing an unidentified flying object. It is not a hoax. It is real. The film was taken by Leland Hansen while filming Catalina Island from a helicopter. In recent years, Escalating reports of unidentified submerged objects, or USOs, flying into and out of the channel have caused great concern to local residents and researchers. The whole area here is just a huge hotbed of UFO activity. I've uncovered probably two, three hundred cases of UFOs flying over the mountains and over the water here. It's just a huge hot spot. Preston Dennett is the author of UFOs Over California, he has been investigating USO activity in this area for almost 20 years. Actually, there was a huge wave of sightings over the Santa Monica mountain range on June 14, 1992. The witnesses counted a total of about 200 objects. What's interesting about this case is these objects came from below. Normally, when someone sees a UFO, it comes out of the sky like a star. They see a star-like object and it comes swooping down. These came from below to above. June 14th, 1992, 10.24 p.m. For almost two minutes, the waters of the Pacific Ocean explode with light as hundreds of bright, disc-like craft are witnessed flying out of the water together. Similar to other reports of USOs exiting the water, these craft emerge from the Pacific in almost complete silence. They reportedly hover for a moment before bursting into space. Reports of this incident were phoned into local police departments as far away as Malibu. The following is an actual call that was placed on that day. Officer Sheriff, did anyone report anything strange tonight? Uh, it be more than one specific. Uh, strange, uh... Light. Light? Yes. What exactly uh, happened to you? I'm ashamed to tell you because I think you're going to think you're crazy. We saw 
what we thought was a bright light up in the sky. Okay. We could hear it. It wasn't a helicopter. I'm telling you, I have never been more frightened in my life. According to Dennett, the incident was also reported to the U.S. Coast Guard sector in Long Beach, which ultimately declined the search request. This 1992 event was the second in Los Angeles in three years. On the dark, foggy morning of February 7, 1989, scuba divers, boat sonar systems, and people on the shore witness a long, dark, unidentified craft dive out of the Pacific. For about 90 seconds, the USO rests just above the surface before emitting about a dozen smaller, fast-moving objects. Sixty seconds later, the craft dives back underwater. Its last reported sonar heading was south toward the Santa Catalina Channel before it disappeared. And it involved dozens of objects which were seen off the coast of Marina del Rey. On occasion, some of these craft would emit smaller craft about 20 feet in diameter. And these were seen moving underneath the surface of the ocean, and they were coming in and out of the water. As the 1947 incident at Roswell sparked worldwide curiosity about flying saucers, these events near Los Angeles have sparked a current wave of research into the capabilities and threats of so-called USOs. The oceans of the world cover, you know, 70% of the planet. They hide uh, a lot of history and a lot of mystery. There's a very good reason for a whole society of uh, creatures sentient creatures, advanced creatures living underwater because they can, because nobody goes there. It's fascinating to think of the underwater UFOs because they know a lot about this planet that you and I don't know. Unique to the USO phenomenon is the reported ability of these craft to multiply and break apart. One such astounding case has become known as the Golfo Nuevo event. On February 8th, 1960, the Argentinian Navy is on alert as they track two unidentified submarine-like objects in its waters, thought to be American subs. Then, according to reports, the underwater objects are seen on sonar to break apart and fly out of the water. Sonar contact, 173, 438 yards. Bridge combat, sonar contact, 173, 438 yards. Two gigantic submarines sighted by the Argentinian Navy in 1960 inexplicably multiplied into six other submarine objects. The Argentinians were never able to catch them or destroy them because the objects simply disappeared. The case even caught the attention of the Soviet Union's most senior officials. Nikita Khrushchev, who was the leader of the Soviet Union at the time, was so much intrigued by the whole story that he sent his diplomatic attaché in Buenos Aires to find out what's been going on. While some researchers contend that these reported cases might be nothing more than military submarines firing torpedoes, others argue that submarines were not capable of firing six or more objects in 1960. Late USO researcher Ivan T. Sanderson's 1970 book, Invisible Residence, was the first to analyze the USO phenomenon. He reports on another remarkable example of USO behavior, in March 1963, a U.S. Navy submarine exercise is progressing as planned 100 miles off Puerto Rico. Suddenly, one Navy sub abruptly breaks from its assigned route after picking up an unidentified object traveling at speeds in excess of 150 knots. The submarines are astonished by the depth at which the unidentified craft is moving, 20,000 feet underwater gave the acoustic signature of a single propeller uh, type of motion through the water and uh, it was tracked at depths down to 20,000 feet whereas a typical crush, crush depth for a submarine would be 7,000 feet. So this thing, whatever it was, was exceeding the technical capabilities of uh, submarines at that time and even today. The vessel is tracked for almost four days by the entire carrier group. The object would reportedly propel away at impossible speeds and then stop and rest, allowing for continued tracking by the Navy. Reports about this event were sent back to Sinclair Fleet Headquarters in Norfolk, Virginia. However, an official determination into what was seen on sonar that